2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Do you see, I'm not using any classes here, right? So this is a direct implementation which we are doing it here. I see. Okay, so because so the, you... So you the, mm -hmm. the, the top implementation, which is already there in 1.7? Yeah, this is the way you do it in year 1.7 because let's say uh, you want to just print, uh, you want to take the help of an interface, no doubt, because always you, you program using an interface. And using your IT worker, you just want to print whether he's an IT worker or whether he's a non-IT worker. So for that reason, what you do, you create an IT worker class and then you uh, implement your IT worker with your IT uh, interface, worker interface. And then you basically can override here, uh, no problems at all. Otherwise, if you do not override it here, if I comment this out, uh, okay, if I comment this out here, Okay, so if I do it in this way, the moment I say IT worker, it is basically going to invoke your uh, your uh, IT workers working method. Okay, uh, and then you say working, and basically what you get, you just get one uh, line of code wherein it says I'm a Java IT worker. Okay, so it's very well uh, plain and simple. Uh, but here in this case, I don't want to have any class why do i need to have a class because i just want to print this okay i just give you a very small example of your lambda expression all right now if suppose there is a, some kind of a calculation you want to do a calculation in 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 your one line of code you do not want to have any kind of implementation from any of the class okay you can have the calculation uh, here and uh, here itself instead of depending on a particular class and invoking a particular method okay so Jairam, are we just uh, trying to avoid uh, implementing these methods in the classes when we are implementing an interface? What is, I'm trying to see what lambda expression advantage is that here. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. I mean, you do not depend on a particular method to have your own a piece of code written into it. Okay. Now here, if you see, I want to override something out here, right? So what I did. So what I did uh, out here, uh, I, I, when I, the moment I created IT worker, now IT worker has already got a default implementation. It says, let's say I'm saying I am a default implementation. Okay. Now in order to, I don't want to print that. So what do you do? You basically again override it the time you create an instance of your class here. Okay. Now, Ultimately, what you're doing is you are again doing some functionality out here, which is going to override all your other implementation and you're just going to print this. Okay. The same thing at times you might be having this kind of requirement and you tend to use this. Okay. The same thing I'm going to do it with, without having, without taking the help of a class also. I will just have one particular interface. That interface, when I say on that interface, I am just going to invoke a particular method. In that particular method, the, the moment I invoke that, it is going to run the functionality which is inside your Lambda expression here. Okay. I'll, I'll try to push up some more, more examples uh, down the line uh, so that uh, at least at, at this point of time, just have an idea what a Lambda expression and how do we, we can use it. Okay. So down the line, I promise I'll just add some more extra examples. And we'll see the other examples related to Lambda expressions also, which will give you a good understanding of what a Lambda expression is. Okay. And Jaira, mm -hmm. uh, only the bottom part is uh, the Lambda expression, right? The worker interface, non-IT worker. Yeah, only so this, this is the Lambda expression. Okay. If so I put, the, okay. if I put this in a single line out here, 
Okay, so this is my entire lambda expression. I can even I don't need this at this point of time. Uh, okay, let me even remove this. Okay, so this is what I have it right now. Because if I have multiple statements, then I can add uh, multiple statements using your uh, curly braces out here. If I have. So even if I'm, uh, mm -hmm. so even if I'm uh, uh, implementing the method right here, it is going to uh, call the working class from the interface, right? You are you, you're using a lambda expression. You cannot uh, implement or override anything as such. Okay. But still, it is going to call the working uh, method in the uh, IT worker, right? No, not at all. See, right now, let me even comment out all these things. So, right click, run as Java application. Okay. So, nothing is getting called. Uh, the moment I say this one on a non IT worker, right? Run as Java application. Then only your this particular expressions, a method, uh, this this SOP is going to get invoked. Okay. okay. It is something like, uh, what do you have it here? It's you're having a, fun a, a SOP here, right? So that SOP is getting printed out here. Or otherwise, if you go to your, if you invoke this method, what all things are there in the method? It gets printed basically. Okay. Okay. So the same thing goes for your lambda expression. Also, you have to invoke the method in order to, and as as you know, you you only have only one method in it okay and that method you are just invoking it out here uh, uh, Jira, uh -huh. uh, where are you getting the non it worker at this point where did you take that this is the one so okay i got you okay so how did you didn't you have to follow the entire Path where you said worker interface non IT worker, you said new IT worker. Like yeah, this the, this is what we have it, uh, what we had it initially. Okay, I've got okay. two versions out here. One is with the normal implementation. Okay, one is we'll do one thing. I'll copy this, paste it here, and uh, remove all these things out here. All right, so this is one version of it very plain and simple version of it wherein you okay control z here and this and here this okay so the three versions right now uh, one is the default way how you invoke a method on your it worker the second one you are again overriding uh, it in the class uh, in the, in the at the time you create an instance of this particular IT worker. Okay, the third is your using your lambda expression. Okay, all right. Uh, down the line, even we'll see uh, how I can put on uh, more examples and make you guys more explain uh, our give you a very uh, wide understanding of what is a lambda expression because in JDK 1.8, uh, there'll be a lot of places you'll be using uh, lambda, lambda expression. So it's it's a very good idea to have a good understanding of what a lambda expression is. Okay. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. basically it creates a class internally. Uh, the, the, the compiler will create, create a class internally with its own name and then assign but by implementing this uh, worker interface and then uh, assign it to the non-IT worker value, right? Uh, what class it is? It is there is no class at all. No, no, no we are not writing a class. Though. We are not mentioning any class name. Yeah, yeah virtually you can class. think of it, uh, but it is not going to create any class out uh, out here. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So without lambda interface class main class with lambda, is this the correct way of thinking? One sec. Uh, without lambda interface, okay. With lambda interface, with one method main class. Uh, yeah, with lambda expression, you need to have only one method. Okay, without lambda uh, lambda expression, I mean, as I said, without uh, having an interface having only one method, you cannot basically have this kind of implementation in your code. Okay, if you know 
your uh, interface is only having one method then you can use it as a lambda expression okay uh, I would request you guys uh, to please practice this uh, because it's uh, more important to understand and even the next chapter when we uh, when we talk about threads also we'll try to use the runnable in which I'm going to tell you how to use your lambda expression as well okay and every now and then if I get a chance I will just put on this particular information to you so that you get used to this lambda expression okay all right uh, we just have 15 minutes of time right now uh, I will just take up a short topic now okay we'll talk about uh, string okay now we know we have been using string a lot in all the programs for saying string name uh, string plays okay now let's see something more about strings right now and understand what it is all about okay so right click new package dot string finish new class string example finish All right so what am I going to do here uh, plain and simple uh, I just say string name equals to one okay uh, I say uh, string okay name equals to name plus equals to two right so when I say sys out and type in the name out here right click run as Java application so I get it as one and two okay uh, other version of it I say okay I say name uh, equals to name plus three okay so again the same if I just print this out right click run as Java application okay I get I get it as one two and three because I'm basically concatenating uh, okay I'm basically concatenating uh, the value of your name and then I'm adding the two into one I'm adding the three into one and two again okay very plain and simple to understand okay now uh, whenever you talk about any of the class as you know string by itself is a class okay it has got its own hierarchy it, uh, it implements realizable comparable character sequence we'll see a couple of things uh, in in the coming sessions okay now here in this case i if i want to get the length of the string you know that if i say sys out name dot length that means already there is a method uh, which is uh, which is having some diff uh, some implementation which is going to give me the length so i don't have to get into uh, get deep into it because this has already been implemented right right click run as java application so i get the value as 3 because the length of this uh, string is 3 okay not even interested in this also okay uh, now i do some concatenation to and again I concatenate uh, 3 out here okay and then you just print this well and good now the question is how many object uh, gets created okay now usually before even uh, talking about that if I say string uh, okay so let me say string name equals to new of string okay now I can do it in this way also I can directly say string place equals to okay new uh, place equals to let's say new york all right <clears throat> now uh, in java okay 
So you can either do it in this way, you can even do it in the other way out also. So this this is what a facility which a strings gives it to you. All right. Now what next? I will create one more string out here. Let's say name two. Okay. So what did I do out here? I created two objects for me. One one is a name one. Okay. The other one is a name two. Now what if I say um, just watch, watch closely. What if I say if name one equals to equals to name two? Okay, and I'm just going to say here sys out both are same. Else. different okay now can you guys type in what will be the value of this whether I'm going to get both are same or different different okay any other questions any other answer from anyone same okay same all right so let's let's see let, let us run this and see uh, what it is basically no, sorry. Suppose I thought you had two of the other names. Uh huh. No, it is it is it is one and one out here. Okay. Okay. Right click, run as Java application. Uh, you see it as a different. Okay. You do not see it as same because they are in different memory uh, bands. Hence, it's different. Correct. Yeah. That's that's correct. Okay. Uh, now what basically happens? Uh, you have two strings so ultimately in your memory okay in your memory you'll be creating two objects because everything is an object out here and you are basically checking these two objects out here okay we'll talk something more about it in the next uh, in in the coming minute okay now instead of saying if name one equals to name two okay I just try using and this is not equals because you know what is a name one this is name one and this is your name two name one is referring to your this guy name two is referring to your this guy okay when what is this reference this reference has got the memory address of this guy and this reference has got the memory address of this guy and as I know they don't belong to the same reference at all okay what if i say a uh, string name one one equals to name one okay now what did i do right now i am referring name one to this object and i created a name one one okay and i've assigned the value of name one one to n11 which is ultimately is going to refer to your this is let's say one okay now let's see what is going to be the output right now i simply say sys out okay so if i say if name one equals to equals to name one one uh Otherwise, I'll just say sys out. Okay, so this will basically give me whether it is true or false, right? Now I run this. Let me copy this out here. Right click, run as Java application. Right now, I get it as true because your name one is referring to string one as an object the same uh, name one I'm, I'm assigning it to the uh, string reference that is your name one one and here at this point of time i'm checking whether your name one is equals to the name one one or not okay now the next concern uh i have the value name one as one name two as one also i know that i see it i see it uh, with my eyes right 
but why still this is different because we know that it basically points to two different references okay now how still i want to make sure that if these two values are same okay references are different i am talking about the values here right how do i check the values are same or not i will say here if okay instead of saying that i'll, I'll just say sys out and say name one dot equals name two all right so here uh, copy this and paste it out here equals to so what am i doing there is a method known as equals which basically compares the value between two objects okay if you want you can very well go inside this and see all this implementation which we don't want to see that because we are uh, everything is abstracted to us and we just need to invoke this particular functionality the same way there are a bunch of apis so this i say it as an api or a method which will be in handy to you in java so the only thing is you need to know whether those apis are present or not if it is present how to use it as well okay now here let us see right click uh, run as java application now this is giving me as true okay now this name one dot equals to name two equals to true okay the same thing if i just say here uh, name one equals to equals to name two okay so this is your equals to equals to name two right right click run as java application it says false but this says true because you are comparing the values in this so name one and name two are uh, are reference variables yes those are basically the references okay the actual object is this one so to this particular object your name one is a reference name one one is also a reference and you are assigning the value of uh, the name one to your name one one okay can we do the dot equals for only string or we can do it uh, with integer double uh integer double those are all uh, primitive data types okay so one of the question arises is uh, int i equals to 10 and uh, int j equals to 10 can i have something like i dot equals no on primitives you do not have any of the methods defined for that okay so for, for that reason what you can do is if i say uh, j equals to new of integer of 10 now if you see here uh something is happening here uh the object i am referring this object to a primitive type okay or the other way out if i say integer i equals to 10 do you see the difference here i'm having an object out here this is an object again this is a class again okay everything is a class uh, uh in java okay so if you see this is also a kind of a class which is extending xyz uh, class and implementing some in, some other interfaces here okay uh okay there is a good question i'll just copy and paste that question i think everybody know uh, have seen that question okay is there a equals to equals to equals to also uh, i think uh, adil i have to send it send you to the java folks to implement this okay you can very well go and give your suggestions to them so they will implement it for you for sure okay uh all right so this is not possible okay all right so uh here what's happening is uh, this is a primitive data type so whenever you say something like int i equals to 10 okay let me comment this out this is your primitive data type and when i say integer i equals to new of integer this is actually the 
wrapper representation of a primitive data type. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Jerem, I might have. I'm sorry, Jerem, I might have missed it. Uh, what's the primitive data type? A uh, primitive data type is just your integer, i int integer, or a byte, okay, or short, okay, or or long. These are all primitive data types, okay. So for every primitive data type, there is a wrapper data type also. All right, the same way if you see here uh, for integer int, I say as a integer. For byte, there will be a there is already a class that is your byte. All right. So that is the only difference here. Uh, usually when we talk uh, about serialization, we'll see down the line. Everything has to be because when we talk about advanced Java, uh, when, when you try to uh, invoke a method some, from the remote system, you want to get some information back. Okay. The way you are saying uh, public int call me, right? So this call is returning you some integer. Okay. So we'll see how we are going to use. We will be using all uh, wrapper data type, which is very important for us to understand. Okay. So down the line, which we will see what our wrapper data type also is. Okay. As of now, just understand that uh, for every primitive data type, you have got a wrapper data type also. Okay. Which is in the form of an object. Okay. Now, I was talking about this wherein uh, you are having an integer i and on the right hand side you are not saying new of integer instead you are just saying a primitive data type. On the other side you say int j and you say j equals to uh, new of this is a primitive to a primitive you are basically assigning a new object. Okay. Now this is these kind of uh, functionality is known as auto boxing. Okay. So whenever you want uh, come across any other term as auto boxing that means you are basically converting your primitive to, to primitive to wrapper or wrapper to primitive i is object uh, no yeah i is a i is an object reference here okay this i is an object reference but this j is not an object reference it is it is a primitive data type out here but again as this auto boxing 1.4 was not there came in 1.5 okay so this is a feature which has come up come up in 1.5 jdk 1.5 all right so before I, that mm -hmm. yeah, i didn't get this so wh why do you have in new integer in bracket uh, oh that means you don't have to define the step uh, really no usually for 10, you can just use integer J equal. Okay. You don't have, like you're giving basically what you're doing is you're saying that the J has the value of 10. Is that what you're saying? J has got a value of 10. Okay. But why does integer come in? Like integer is coming thing? because I just wanted to introduce a wrapper data type out here. Okay. Now, usually you could have told something int k equals to 10 also. Okay. But as I'm saying, for every primitive data type, there is a class for it also. And that class is nothing but your integer, i n t e g e r. Okay. Because in Java, everything you'll be having, you're, you're going to deal with classes at all completely. Is that okay? Is that clear? Or oh, it's not clear? No, I, I got it. So integer here is basically just a simple class. That's what it is. Yes, it is a separate class here. Okay. The same way there are a lot of other classes which are representing your primitive data types. Okay. Can we do integer i equals to some character or string? Uh, integer i equals to some character or string? No, this is not possible. If I say uh, some integer out here, this is going to give me a compile time error. Okay, you cannot basically have uh, different data types out here. Okay, I, I have a question now. If uh, we say that int is not a class, 
an integer is a class. Mm -hmm. So then how we can say uh, int j is equal to new integer? Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to explain here. In JDK 1.4, this functionality was not there. Okay. In JDK 1.5, this functionality has come that is known as your auto boxing. Because here you are talking about an integer uh, and you're creating an object, but no doubt uh, what when on the left hand side you're using a wrapper data type here. So automatically this data gets converted to your integer value as j equals to 10. Okay, so this is all is being uh, underlined, which is been defined and we're just trying to use it. Okay, so if I say sys okay. out. Uh, if j equals to equals to 10. So right click run as Java application. I get the value is true here. Okay. So if I say j equals to k, right click run as Java application. It is true again. Okay. Or if I say uh, j equals to i, what is i? i is on the top, right click, run as Java application. It is true again. Okay. All right. Uh, I think it's time uh, we have to we have to move on. Next uh, session, I'm going to talk much about strings, uh, wherein we'll see what are the features present in your strings. We just initiated it, but I think we haven't completed anything out of it. I uh, will be talking about string pool, uh, which is again one of the important concepts to understand because uh, spring pool is the one which basically uh, takes care of your uh, kind of a, you don't, you don't end up using a lot of memory. Okay. So we'll see how those things are happening in, in case of your strings itself. Okay. Now, what is the reason we are, we are saying uh, uh, something like this uh, place equals to New Jersey. Why we are not saying string place one equals to new string of New Jersey. Both are same. Okay. So why should I, why I should not say place equals to New Jersey? Sorry. Why should I say as place equals to New Jersey instead of saying place equals to new of string New Jersey? Okay. We'll talk about these things by tomorrow. All right. So if no questions, uh, We'll just wind up. Uh, J -J, um, uh, this is actually not, uh, a little off the subject. Um, are we going to be learning Java Enterprise Edition also? Uh, Java e yeah, once we complete the core Java, we'll be talking about uh, Enterprise Editions as well. Okay, thank you. Yep. Next class is tomorrow, uh, same time. 8 p.m. EST. All right, guys, thank you. Um, have a good night. Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.